True crime is a very interesting subject to me because it's something that no one is immune to being sucked in by, right? Like, you have Tiger King, which ignited national interest on who murdered that guy. I don't, I don't know. I haven't actually seen it myself. But what I do know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is that Carol Baskin killed her husband. What's that? That's just speculation because eccentric people were being eccentric. And my only impression of her being that she's a murderer is mortifying because it's a very real chance that, that isn't true, yet it defines her reputation. Huh. Like I said, true crime can suck in absolutely anyone, and I'm not about to sit here and act above it. But after reading about dozens of cases on r slash unresolved mysteries, I started checking out the comments more. And I realized that while I liked reading about the mysteries and didn't really engage with them beyond hearing the facts of the case, there was a whole section of people who considered this to be a hobby. And that stood out to me as being really... Weird. Like, my main hobby is gaming, right? And thus, I'm a bit of an authority on that topic. I can talk about it for a really long time. I know a lot about it, and I have an emotional investment in it. And ultimately, gaming doesn't really matter, right? Like, if my opinions of The Last of Us Part 2 are different than yours, well, that doesn't really matter. We can discuss theories and interpretations of the character's actions without doing harm to anyone, right? Now, Weirdly, I started to notice that those conversations I would have about fictional characters, people were having those exact conversations about the real people involved in true crime cases. And that's because people started to see their interest in true crime as an entertainment-based hobby, the same as gaming. These people even felt like they were authorities, people who deserved respect for their experience in this... field. People who thought that they knew the answer to unsolved questions because they read a Wikipedia article and, worst of all, people who thought because they read about a case, they know the victims or the families involved on a personal level, or they know how to close a case better than the investigating parties. It was creepy to me, and I saw this in all kinds of cases. But most of the cases I personally read about are cases that happened years ago. I never really saw the delusions and disrespectful behaviors people would demonstrate towards a case unfold in real time. That is, until now. You see, this video is one I thought of six months ago. It's been sitting in my notes app forever. If, you know, if six months count as forever. And I'm making it now because of a case that's been making headlines for the past few news cycles now, and that's of course the disappearance and eventual murder of Gabby Petito. And at first, I was reluctant to even make a video about the situation because I was seeing countless people exploit this case for clout. The hashtag on TikTok alone has over half a billion views from tons of wannabe influencers, and I honestly couldn't really stomach being a part of that just for... What, some numbers to go up? Nice. But I changed my mind because I think a lot of people are getting lost in what they describe as excitement and are forgetting that this isn't a game and it isn't an episode of Criminal Minds. And to just go ahead and handle the stupidest argument I see people try to make against commentary videos, I'm not exploiting the situation by criticizing those who are exploiting the situation. Holding people accountable does not equate you to those you're holding accountable. That's also why this video doesn't have ads enabled, unless YouTube forces ads with their BS rules. I, I can't really determine that. And for those of you who aren't familiar, simply put, this is a case where an up-and-coming influencer was on a trip with her fiancé when she suddenly stopped contacting her family. After weeks of concern, her fiancé returned home without her in their shared van while refusing to comment on her location. The last time she's been heard from in a way that is believed to be authentic by her family was a month ago, despite her Instagram updating several times since then. And, as of recording, her body was just found and identified, and her fiancé is considered a person of interest and has gone missing, most likely because he went into hiding in order to evade authorities. Now, that's a huge oversimplification of events, because the point of this video isn't me teaching you what happened for some clout, but as you can tell even from that, there's a lot interesting about the case, a lot of drama if this were a story. The romantic partner being involved, the missing party having some level of celebrity to their name, the Instagram being updated, etc. Yes, I, I say etc. out loud. 
Leave me alone. But the attention that this case has gotten has convinced everyone and their mother that they are suddenly Sherlock Holmes. They're zooming in and enhancing photos, despite their qualifications being limited to using Facetune when posting their main contribution to the world up until now, that of course being posting the same selfie every three days in slightly different clothing. Everyone is also a psychological and legal expert now, able to discern one's guilt based on them exercising their constitutional right to an attorney, and are thus helping police police propagate ideas that result in more innocent people being imprisoned. Because people became so fixated on this case that they lost all sense of context. They've begun making arguments against the fiancé that they would be outraged about if such arguments were made towards someone they considered to be innocent. And I'm not about to defend the fiancé in the slightest. Guilty or not, the dude hasn't exactly acted ethically, nor has he prioritized Gabby's safe return and his actions if he were to believe that she was possibly still alive. In fact, this is Brian Laundrie, Gabby's fiance and a person of interest in this case that authorities are currently looking for. If you spot him, please be sure to share that information with the FBI. Link will be below. That said, you have comments like, he lawyered up so quickly equals guilty AF. Congratulations! You have put into words the dumbest takeaway you could possibly have here. The police do not act in the best interest of really anyone, but rather in the best interests of closing a case. If you are suspected by police or are questioned by police in connection to a crime, you should immediately request an attorney, because you can say things that implicate you in a crime you didn't actually commit. Now, if you were to say that it's suspicious he would prioritize getting a lawyer over providing what information he has to those leading the search for Gabby, that would be an actually fair take based on the information at hand. But no, 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 you wanted your 400 likes and only have the patience to type, but nine words, despite the fact that you're literally spreading police propaganda in the process. Seriously, police will often advise people against getting an attorney during interrogation because it will, quote, make them look guilty, when in reality, it only reduces the chance of facing wrongful imprisonment or a wrongfully cruel sentence. So, lucky for us, we have our resident psychology experts giving us a full rundown of the situation. Hopefully. Hopefully you detected the sarcasm there. But of course, based solely on police footage of the couple arguing, we can ascertain that not only was Brian constantly abusive, but his motive was constant jealousy of her platform. Also, he was constantly gaslighting her, he killed another couple in the area, and is a psychopathic narcissist. And the most reliable qualification I've seen is, I have a blue check mark, and I've been the victim of an abusive partner. Because, as a victim of an abusive partner, and thus domestic trauma, you clearly possess the ability to be objective and not project your experiences onto others. I'm convinced. And again, my issue isn't because I plan on defending Brian. Again, here's his face if you see him. FBI link is below. But rather, people use words and say things without any regard for their meaning. It's a pet peeve I have in general, especially with gaslighting. People just learned that the term exists. Hell, it reached its peak use last month. And despite it being a very complicated term that takes a fair amount of educating to properly understand, suddenly everyone is qualified to use that word without any idea what it means. All of a sudden, everyone you know has been in a relationship involving gaslighting, and thus can identify it based on one video. So, when you have actual victims of gaslighting and abuse, they don't receive the validation they need because everyone has been gaslighted and abused. It sucks, right? Like. My girlfriend lied to me about doing the dishes just this morning. Can you believe I survived being a victim of gaslighting? Also, if that wasn't bad enough, you have people using this as a chance to be condescending, pushing BS ideas like the capability of being psychic or horoscopes solving this crime. Glad the stars are telling you how the investigation's going to go, you self-righteous jerks. Then you have people who know better than law enforcement, being condescending to law enforcement, and thus trying to act as strategists to them. And this goes with literally every ongoing mystery. The most famous example of this being the tragic murders that took place in Delphi, Indiana of two young girls. If you go to the subreddits dedicated to this case, you will see people constantly telling police what to do, telling them to release more information to the public, speculating that law enforcement know who the perpetrator is and are on the cusp of proving it, but also that they know absolutely nothing. 
Yeah, guys, because because Reddit has such a good track record when it comes to finding criminals. Not like it has an actual body count of innocent people who killed themselves after the internet became convinced they were guilty of a heinous crime. You know, uh, here's an idea. If you want to contribute something to the investigation, then only state things publicly if it has been objectively proven and if your sole purpose is to raise awareness of the situation. If you're going to speculate or you think you've discovered something of value for the investigation, send that information to the FBI, then for the love of God, shut up. Up! Stop living out your criminal mind fantasies. You're not Spencer Reed. You're not misunderstood. You're just insufferable. And that brings me, of course, to clout chasers. Because, let's face it, saying something and knowing people are going to listen, it feels good. But what happens if you don't have any talent, perspective, or morals? Well, you could just focus your account on updating people on this case, prioritizing being the first to report, not necessarily the most accurate. Not to mention the people using trending sounds to comment on the situation. You know, because trendy sounds dramatically increase your potential views. Nice. So now we know that when all these videos were coming out, Gabby was dead. But you're singing Taylor Swift to joke about it. Classy. And yeah, with humor, nothing's off limits, but that's no excuse to lack any taste. And a lot of the people cool with this are the same people who would be reasonably outraged about SA jokes, but this, no, 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 this is fine because they benefit from it. And like I said, you have your investigative reporters trying to crack the case for us, leading to gems like this. I just wanted to post an update to the Gabby Petito video that my friend and I uploaded. We did not have all the facts. We misspoke out of excitement with just thinking that we had actually contributed to the case, but I don't think that that warrants for hate. That video she apologized for? As of writing this video, it was still up because what do you know? It got a million views while this account has sub 1,000 followers. A public forum on fashion, lifestyle, and trends, huh? Just so happens one of those trends was someone's life. Classy. Also, the subreddit dedicated to Gabby's case had two posts posted at the same time by two different mods that contradicted one another. One post was correctly stating that a discovered body was not yet confirmed to be Gabby, while the other called it confirmed. Because as we all know, the thrill of moderating a subreddit with millions of visitors takes precedence over the responsibilities that that entails. Oh, what's that? You want a lightning round of the last few things that bother me with true crime hobbyists? Sure. People acting like they know the victims and are trying to insert themselves into the case in some sad, minuscule way. People watching live streams of the POI's house because your motivation totally stems from your desire to better the world and not at all to satisfy your own sick sense of entertainment. People sharing baseless theories that achieve nothing but stirring excitement. People making discoveries and saying that, you know, quote unquote, they should look into it instead of, you know, just forwarding the tip to a hotline. People analyzing emojis used to determine with certainty who posted on her profile. Yeah, I'm serious with that one. People speculating on the POI's parents' involvement in this crime when we have no idea what happened behind closed doors and are again judging a situation based on very little information. Questioning why lawyers aren't arrested every time they represent someone guilty. I'm not even going to touch on why that's so stupid because that would take me literally 10 minutes. That is how stupid that question is. People referring to cases as pet cases or their favorite like there wasn't a victim to a crime, you sick losers. I have cases I follow closely or that I want to see justice on, but never in my life have I even internally referred to them as pet cases or ranked them. Oh my god. People visiting crime scenes in order to relive them and play detective. Hey, hey, um... Don't do that. Just an idea. Don't do that. Also, the people who defend Brian by using the term innocent till proven guilty, not understanding that that only applies to a court of law, not the court of public opinion. And perhaps worst of all, people treating the polygraph test as an infallible metric of truth when the polygraph is nothing more than pseudoscience. It doesn't actually tell if someone's lying or telling the truth. It's a complete sham and yet more police propaganda. People talking about parties they think are involved to the point of having established acronyms denoting their theories. Oh my god, an awkward guy who faced severely traumatic events as a child, including people accusing him of murdering his sister at the age of seven, acted differently than I would during a televised interview? 
Oh, well, he clearly did it. There is nothing wrong with individually finding interest in crimes, but when you choose to engage with and form communities around this topic, you owe it to the people you're discussing to question every interaction you have and make sure every word is tasteful and in the best interest of justice. Because ultimately, justice should be the most important thing here. Not harassing innocent people, not getting views, and not living out a fantasy because you didn't become a detective and your favorite show is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And even if every assumption about this case ends up being true, that doesn't change a thing about my argument. Because I've read about enough cases with well-meaning people who let their confidence, arrogance, and disassociation get people killed ruin people's lives, and even obstruct the pursuit of actual justice. And in all of those cases, the hobbyists felt the same way as all of the people inserting themselves into this case now. Just something to think about, I guess. Bye! Hey, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. It actually really helps me out a lot. I make comedic commentary videos, critiques, and video essays every weekend, and if you're not convinced yet, you can check out some more recommendations above. Alright, well, thanks again.